Well, good morning, guys. It's Pastor Andy. Today's Tuesday, July the 7th, and we're looking in Psalm chapter 119, verses 1 through 8. Psalm 119 is obviously the longest psalm and the longest chapter in the entire Bible. So there is no way in God's green earth we're going to go through this chapter all in one day. In fact, we're going to break it up into the alphabet. And this whole book, this whole chapter of Psalm 119 is broken up into the Hebrew alphabet, going from beginning to the end. And each one of these sections begins with the letter of this alphabet. So we're going to look at the first section of the alphabet in Hebrew and this first section of Psalm 119. It starts with Aleph. That's the first letter of the alphabet in, in Hebrew. So here it is, Psalm 119, verse 1. Joyful are people of integrity who follow the instructions of the Lord. Joyful are those who obey his laws and search for him with all their hearts. You know, in some translations, that word joyful is translated uh, blessed. And it's the only time we read that word in this chapter. So it starts off telling us how we can be blessed, tells us how to be joyful. And there's a big difference between joy and happiness because happening or happiness comes from the happenings around me. It comes from my circumstances. But true joy comes from God and it's on the inside and no one and nothing can affect that. So for me to have true joy in my life, this chapter tells me how I can do this. These two verses at the beginning of this chapter, it says, joyful are people of integrity. Are you a person of integrity? Do you keep your word? When you say you're gonna do something, do you do it? Are you a person who can be counted on? Are you a person who is on time? Are you a person who, uh, when you say you're going to do something, you do it? Are you a person of true integrity? Because joyful are people of integrity who follow the instructions of the Lord. And in this chapter, nearly every verse, we find some reference to God's word. And we'll point those out as we go through it. And here's the first one, the instructions of the Lord. Are you one who follows God's word? Are you one who is in God's word daily? Are you following after God? Are you spending time with him every single day? That's an important part of having joy in our life. Verse two, joyful are those who obey his laws. Obey the laws. Man, you know, so many times today we hear, oh, we're in the New Testament. We're under grace. We're not under the law. Law was the hammer. Law was the bad news. Well, yes, grace and law are not in opposition. In fact, they work together. God is not a God who is waiting in heaven with a hammer for us to mess up so he can hit us with the law. The law shows me where I come short and that I need grace. The law, as the uh, New Testament writer says, is the schoolmaster. It shows me my shortcomings. It shows my mistakes. So am I one who obeys God's law and search for him with all their hearts? Are you searching for God <clears throat> every day? Are you looking for him? Are you looking for him in his word? Are you looking for him in the day-to-day -day occurrences? So many times I hear people say, well, I don't know God's will for my life. And I always encourage them, don't look for God's will. Look for God. Find him. He's going to show you the next step to take. So find God, look for him in everything, and you'll begin to see him because we always find what we look for. If you're looking for the bad, you're always going to see the bad. If you're looking for the good, you're going to see the good. If you're looking for God, guess what you're going to see? You're going to see God. So search for him. Verse three, they do not compromise with evil and they walk only in his paths. You have charged us to keep your commandments carefully. Oh, that my actions would consistently fully reflect your decrees. Man, I, I hope you pray that. I, I, that's the longing of my heart is, God, I want my life to line up with your word. I wish my life was more like what you say it should be. Next verse. Then I will not be ashamed when I compare my life with your commands. As I learn your righteous regulations, I will thank you by living as I should. I will obey your decrees. Please don't give up on me. <laughs> that should be every one of our prayer every day. God, I'm, I'm, I know I'm not perfect. I know I have shortcomings. I'm trying to live my life as you want me to, but God, please don't give up on me. God, please don't, please don't quit on me. Please don't, uh, Andy, you know, you've, you've messed up too many times. I, I'm done with you. No, God, please don't give up on me today. Please continue to work in me. Please continue to lead, continue to lead me. 
and guide me and direct me. Please continue to love and care for me. Don't give up on me yet, God. I'm not done. I have more to do. I am going to live my life to follow your decrees. How do I do that? How do I live that kind of a life? Well, it talks about it at the beginning. I search for him with my heart, my whole heart. I'm searching for him. I'm in his word every day. I'm reading, I'm praying, I'm spending time with him. And the more that I walk with God, spending time in his word and in prayer, the more my life will line up with his word. And the more I will be proud of the kind of life that I am living, not in a wrong kind of pride, but in a right kind of pride. And that's okay to be proud that we are a follower of Jesus, not the pride of life, but the satisfaction of knowing that I am one of his children. So God, please don't give up on me. I hope you'll get into this psalm and read it for yourself. There's a lot of good stuff in here. I'll see you guys tomorrow. God bless you and have a great day.